Welcome to a new segment at the Ballet Consultant channel. 15 minutes dance history. Well, I will attempt to keep it short. My name is Anne-Marie and today I will tell you briefly about the world famous ballerina Anna Pavlova. Before we start, there are links in the description box to websites with video footage and articles. Every photo you will see here I found on the internet and merely here for educational purposes to illustrate the story. If there are any watermarks, I left them on to show you who owns the pictures. And since my native tongue is Dutch, I think you can hear that with my accent, I will butcher some of the words and names with my pronunciation, so I apologize in advance. All right, let's go. Anna Pavlova was born premature and regularly fell ill during her childhood. As a little girl, she was soon sent to the village of Ligovo, where her grandmother looked after her. Anna's great interest for ballet started when her mother took her to a performance of Marius Petipa's original production of The Sleeping Beauty at the Imperial Mariinsky Theatre. The lavish performance made a considerable impact on her. Anna auditioned at the renowned Imperial Ballet School when she was nine. But because of her age and what was her sickly appearance, she was rejected. In 1891, one year later, she was accepted. Her first appearance on stage was in Petipas Un Conte de Fées, a fairy tale, which the ballet master staged for the students of the school. Young Anna's years of training were not easy, but quite difficult. Classical ballet did not come easily to her. She had severely arched feet, thin ankles and long arms and legs. Ballerinas in this age looked like acrobats. Small, compact and strong. Anna was small, but not strong. Her fellow students bullied her with nicknames as the broom. Anna kept training to improve her technique. She would practice and practice after learning a step. It was claimed, she said, no one can arrive from being talented alone. God gives talent, work transforms talent into genius. She took extra lessons from the noted teachers of the day, Christian Johansson, Pavel Gerd, Nicolai Legat, and from Enrico Cecchetti, considered the greatest ballet virtuoso of that time. He is also the founder of the Cicchetti Method, a very influential ballet technique used to this day. When Master Cicchetti came to Russia, a lot of his Italian students came along. These dancers were strong and known for amazing acrobatic stunts with turning and jumping. Her hard work paid off. During her final year at the Imperial Ballet School, she performed many roles with the principal company. After her graduation in 1899, at the age of 18, she entered the Imperial Ballet a rank ahead of corps de ballet as a coryphée. She made her official debut at the Mariinsky Theatre in Pavel Gerd's The False Dryads. At the height of Marius Petipa's strict ballet forms, the public was taken aback by Anna's style she frequently performed with bent knees, bad turnout, misplaced poor de bras, and incorrectly placed tours. But such a style in many ways looked back and reminded of the time of the romantic ballet and the great ballerinas of old like Camargo and Taglioni. Her performances were well received by audiences and critics alike. But once during a performance in Petipas the Pharaoh's daughter, her enthusiasm got the better of her. She lost her balance during energetic double pique turns and ended up falling into the prompter's box. She tried desperately to imitate the renowned Pirina Lignani, prima ballerina assoluta of the Imperial Theatres. Once during class, she attempted Lignani's famous fuetes, causing her teacher, Pavel Gert, to fly into a rage. He told her, leave acrobatics to others. 
It is positively more than I can bear to see the pressure such steps put on your delicate muscles and the severe arch of your foot. I beg you to never again try to imitate those who are physically stronger than you. You must realize that your daintiness and fragility are your greatest assets. You should always do the kind of dancing which brings out the best of you, your own rare qualities, instead of trying to win praise by mere acrobatic tricks. Now sticking to what she could do best, Anna rose through the ranks quickly. She became a favorite of the old maestro Petipa. It was from Petipa himself that she learned the title role in Paquita, Princess Aspicia in The Pharaoh's Daughter, Guidnicia in Le Roi Candour, and Giselle. She was named Danseuse in 1902, Premier Danseuse in 1905, and finally Prima Ballerina in 1906 after a magnificent performance in Giselle. Petipa revised many grands pas for her, as well as many supplemental variations. And when the ba ballerina Matilda Kszczynska was with child in 1901, she coached Anna in the role of Nikia in La Bayadere. Kszczynska, not wanting to be upstaged, was certain Anna would fail in the role, as she was considered technically inferior. Instead, audiences became enchanted with her frail, ethereal look, which fitted the role perfectly, particularly in the scene of the Kingdom of the Shades. Anna is perhaps most known for creating the role of the Dying Swan, a solo choreographed by Michel Fauquin. The solo was created in 1905 and just for Anna. It is not a part of Swan Lake, but is danced to Le Signe, the Swan, from Le Carnaval des Animaux, the Carnival of the Animals, by Camille Saint-Saëns. If you would like to see it, you can. There is footage right here on YouTube. Click the link in the description below. Anna also choreographed several solos herself, one of which is The Dragonfly, a short ballet set to Schön Rosmarin, music by Fritz Kreisler. While performing the role, Anna wore a loose-fitting gown with large dragonfly wings fixed to the back. Click the link below in the description to see rare footage of this solo at John Hall's YouTube channel. Now, Anna had a fierce rivalry with the ballerina Tamara Kasavina. According to the film A Portrait of Giselle, Kasavina recalls a wardrobe malfunction. During one performance, her shoulder straps fell and she accidentally exposed herself. And Anna reduced an embarrassed Kasavina to tears. Anna worked briefly for Sergei Diaghilev in the first years of his Ballet Russe. She came over to Paris to dance in various revived Russian ballets. She was also asked to take on the lead in Michel Fauquin's The Firebird, but she later refused the part because she found Igor Stravinsky's score too avant-garde. The role was given to her rival, Tamara Kasavina. All her life, Anna preferred the melodious musique dansante of the old maestros such as César Pugni and Ludwig Minkus, and did not have any interest in different music styles other than the salon-style ballet music of the 19th century. After the first Paris season of Ballet Russe, Anna already left and went to form her own company. She performed throughout the world with a repertory consisting primarily of abridgments of Petipa's work and specially choreographed pieces for herself. A journalist wrote, going independent was a very enterprising and daring act. She toured on her own for 20 years until she died. She traveled everywhere in the world that travel was possible and introduced the ballet to millions who had never seen any form of Western dancing. 
In this picture we see her during a performance in New Zealand. She was received there very enthusiastically and was a great hit. During her travels, Anna learned dances from local teachers, which she also showcased. In addition to the dances of her native Russia, she performed Mexican, Japanese and East Indian dances. In this picture, we see Anna in Mexican folkloric inspired attire. The Mexican hat dance gained popularity outside of Mexico when Anna created a staged version in point shoes for which she was showered with hats by her adoring Mexican audiences. Afterward, in 1925, this dance was proclaimed one of Mexico's national dances. Between 1912 and 1926, Anna made almost annual tours of the United States, traveling from coast to coast. From the website Pavlova Project, link in description, when touring the United States, a favorite stop for Pavlova was Hollywood, where she was fascinated with the film industry. In 1915, Universal Studios contracted her to star in a major new cinematic undertaking, La Mouette de Portici, a silent film directed by Lois Weber. While in Hollywood, Pavlova became friends with fellow superstars Charlie Chaplin, see the picture, and Mary Pickford. It is said that a generation of dancers turned to the art of ballet because of Anna Pavlova. America became Pavlova conscious and therefore ballet conscious. Dance and passion, dance and drama were fused. Anna was introduced to audiences in the United States by Max Rabinov during his time as managing director of the Boston Grand Opera Company from 1914 to 1917. Anne was featured there with her Russian ballet company during that period. The members of her company were largely English girls with Russianized names. In 1912, Anna moved and settled in London, England at the Ivy House, where she lived for the rest of her life. The house had an ornamental lake where she fed her pet swans, and where now stands a statue of her by sculptor George Henry Pollen. The house was featured in the film Anna Pavlova. While in London, Anna was influential in the development of British ballet, most notably inspiring the career of Alicia Markova. The Gate pub, located on the border of Arkley and Totteridge, has a story framed on its walls describing a visit by Pavlova and her dance company. There are at least five memorials in London. A contemporary sculpture by Tom Merrifield of Anna as the dragonfly in the grounds of the Ivy House. A sculpture by George Henry Pollen in the middle of the Ivy House pond. A blue plaque on the front of Ivy House. A statuette sitting with the urn that holds her ashes in Golders Green Crematorium and the gilded statue atop the Victoria Palace Theatre. When the Victoria Palace Theatre in London opened in 1911, a gilded statue had been installed above the cupola of the theatre. This was taken down for its safety during World War II and was lost. In 2006, a replica of the original statue was restored in its place. Now, Anna's feet were extremely arched, so she strengthened her point shoes by adding a piece of hard leather on the soles for support and flattening the box of the shoe. At the time, many considered this cheating, for a ballerina of that time was taught that she, not the shoes, must hold her weight on point. In Anna's case, this was extremely difficult, as the shape of her feet required her to balance her weight on the big toes. Her solution became, over time, the precursors of the modern point shoe, as point work became less painful and easier for curved feet. According to Margot Fontaine's biography, Anna did not like the way her invention looked in photographs. So, 
She would remove it or have the photographs altered so that it appeared she was using a normal point shoe. According to an article placed in the New York Times magazine, The Hague, the Netherlands, Friday, January 23rd. Madame Anna Pavlova, the greatest dancer of her time, died of pleurisy at the Hotel des Andes here at 12.30 this morning. The end came despite every effort of two Dutch physicians and her own Russian doctor, Professor Walerski, to save her. The dancer fell ill on Tuesday after she had come here on tour from Paris and at first it was believed that she merely was suffering from grip as the result of a slight cold contracted in Paris. Later the combination of pleurisy and influenza developed which was complicated by a weakness of the heart. With the dancer at the end was her husband and accompanist Victor Dandré, whom she married in 1924. You can read the uh, whole article by clicking the link in the description. Alright, that's it for now. There's much more to be told, but I promised 15 minutes. Anna Pavlova was one of the most revered and celebrated ballerinas of all time, with her hard work and theatrical talent she achieved greatness. She made it her mission to show ballet to as many people in the world as possible. Would you like to know more about this amazing ballerina? Go ahead and search here on YouTube for more footage on, of her dances, performed by herself or others. There are also numerous books about her life and movies. So have fun and see you in the next video. Bye!